Heavy snow is moving through right now. In fact, this is the heaviest snow we will see of the day. How long will it linger around and how much snow will it bring? We'll break down all the details in your forecast. Chaos in Kansas City as gunfire erupts during the Chiefs' Super Bowl victory parade. The latest on the aftermath that is coming up. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. As we make the transition to Live at 11, we want to give you a live look at the weather beast out there on the one of these freeways. Southeast Michigan is under a winter weather advisory for a few more hours. Right now, the Fox 2 weather beast is out there in those conditions, and this is in the area of Flint. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday. You want to say be careful out there if you have to. Definitely. I'm Amy Lang. Fox 2, following a news alert right now from Gross Point Farms, a school put on lockdown during a police investigation. We're being told that officers actively searched for a robbery suspect who may have been armed with a gun. They looked in the area of Mack and Chalfont. According to police, this male suspect is wearing tan pants and a dark jacket, was involved in a robbery, possibly near the village of Mack, Village Market at Mack and McKinley. Now, we know that over time, the clothing may change but if you saw anyone wearing that in that area please let police know as soon as possible brownell middle school was put on a lockdown as a safety precaution and lockdown has since been lifted stay with fox 2 for updates as they become available and a sad update in a story we've been following out of Southfield. A 15-year-old shot inside the Weston Hotel over the weekend has died. The boy had been in grave condition since the shooting happened on Sunday. He's part of a group of teens in a room with no adult supervision. Earlier this week, prosecutors charged another teenager on weapons charges. The person who booked the room may also face charges. Very tough story that so we've sad. covered this week, and our thoughts are with that family and his community out in Ferndale and his, uh, his school, Loyola High School. Absolutely. But let's get back to our weather. Snow, snow has moved into our area. It's moved, moved in a short time ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. not so thrilled about this, but actually we're just going to like blame it on Derek. What a difference 24 hours makes. We were blessed with sunshine. Yeah. For Valentine's Day. We, we could blame this on Punxsutawney Field, though, Get too. it out of here. The winds of change blowing in this change in forecast here, guys. Winds are going to be gusting. That's a big part of the forecast later in the day. But, of course, right now it is the snow. That snow beginning to get heavy right around 9 a.m. A little after 9. It's going to continue until probably close to noon. Between noon and 1 p.m., most of this is going to be out of here. But clearly, from the thumb all the way down through Toledo, southeast Michigan is dealing with the heaviest snow we will see today right now. So we're dealing with the worst of it currently. Let's zoom into some spots here where the where the blue or the purple color is the deepest, darkest shade. That's where the snowfall rates are the highest. And currently that is in Wayne County. You can see it from Taylor to Livonia, even downtown areas down river near Brownstown are dealing with some heavier snow. You'll see this color of pink right here. You go, what is that? Well, that could be some sleet. For the most part, all the observations I'm seeing are snow observations, but there might be a little bit of sleet as temperatures do begin to rise a little bit. In fact, down in Monroe County, you'll notice he's Numbers near 35 degrees. That's the reason why those areas are expecting to see slightly lower snowfall accumulation numbers. A lot of us between about uh, maybe a half an inch to an inch and a half. That's perhaps how much left from here on out. Areas farther north already picking up one to two. Could be closer to around two, three inches before all said and done. Quick check on that forecast here as we look through the day today with numbers in the 30s, but expected to rise to around 42 degrees by Friday, Saturday, 33. Uh, it's Friday, that is. We do get a little milder heading to the end of the weekend and next week. We'll check the seven-day forecast a little later. Chaos in Kansas City as a Super Bowl celebration turns deadly. Shots were fired near the crowd next to Union Station, which is at the end of the parade route. The celebration area looked desolate as hundreds of people scattered. Armed police and National Guard members rushed in to help. Officers arrested at least three people, but so far there's no motive for this attack. The person who killed, who's killed has been identified as radio DJ Lisa Lopez. She was a mother. She was a wife. Mm. She had two children. The other victims are expected to survive. The youngest was just six years old. Video shows how some fans tackled one of the suspects during the panic after this incident. Well, the only thing I really saw was it, it became chaotic. And um, I hear down, 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 everybody down. We had over 800 officers there. 
staffed, situated all around Union Station today. We had security in, in any number of places, eyes on top of buildings and beyond. And there still is a risk to people. Well, some chief players expressed their sympathies on social media after the shooting. Patrick Mahomes, quarterback of Kansas City, posted on X that he's praying for Kansas City. Travis Kelsey also posted on X saying that he is heartbroken over the tragedy that took place. And Nicole Hardman, the receiver who caught the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, posted prayers. Kansas City, the Chiefs organization, released a statement, too. It reads, our hearts go out to the victims, their families, and all of Kansas City. We'll have more on the shooting coming up in our next half hour. Fox 2 also following breaking developments this morning involving Detroit Pistons player Isaiah Stewart. Just listen to this. Stewart is accused of sucker punching a player from the Phoenix Suns before last night's game. Now, according to police, Stewart was charged with assault for hitting Phoenix Suns center Drew Eubanks. Phoenix police say that Stewart received a citation. He was released. He was already listed out for the game because of a left sprained ankle. Eubank said that before the game, that altercation happened as they, as he walked into the arena, he still played in the Suns' win. The Pistons say that they are aware of this incident. So far, there's been no comment from Stewart. Other news this morning, a large police scene shutting down the ramp from the Southfield Freeway to I-96 overnight for a possible shooting investigation. Both Detroit police and Michigan State troopers responding to the scene on Greenfield Road on Detroit's west side. It is not clear if anyone was hit. We'll continue to follow this and bring you the latest information as we get it. And Detroit police are asking for tips to get a killer behind bars. This involves a shooting we told you about yesterday morning. The shots rang out at an apartment building on Seven Mile Road near Losser. One man was killed, two were hit. Investigators say they found drugs and a weapon at the scene, but the gunman is still on the loose. Anyone with information is asked to speak up and call Crime Stoppers or Detroit police.